hello everybody thank you so much for tuning into my channel um my name is simply wakewane and i'm probably gonna be your new favorite youtuber by the end of this year i think i hope <laughs> um, i decided that today guys i'm actually just gonna come on here and just tell you guys um about the four times that i was actually a victim of crime here in south africa um I don't know if four times is a lot or if it's a few number of times because I'm not like too sure how many times the average South African actually experiences crime in their lifetime. But yeah, for me, it's actually been four times. And um, I am Durban based. I was really born and bred in Durban and I'm still in Durban. So everything that I'm going to be talking about today is actually stuff that happened to me right here in my home city. Um, yeah. So I hope you guys are going to enjoy it and I hope that um, you're going to be able to like, learn from my experiences so that you know in the future you are actually able to like stay woke and be able to see these things before they happen like just be able to see it coming so that you can actually be able to avoid it and not find yourself in the same situation as me. So yeah, um, incident number one, it happens around 2012. So 2012, life is good. I just got in my first job. I think I was 19, yeah, I was 19, just got in my first job. I was actually working uh, at the MTM call center. That was my first gig in Mount Edgecombe. And yeah, I was the girl, man. <laughs> uh, I had just bought a new car and new cell phone, everything, you know, like new money. So everything was like all fresh all brand new and stuff so uh, i had just started driving by myself because for most of the time like ever since i'd gotten the car i think it was less than a month um like having my car so my dad had actually been driving with me for like most of the time because I, I i wasn't comfortable driving alone so he had to drive with me until i got used to it and he had just left me to now be on my own because i had started working shifts i was actually working a shift where i started at 2 p.m at night uh, 2 p.m in the afternoon and i finished at 10 p.m at night uh, it was a nice shift, I liked it. I don't like waking up early, so it was nice. I got to wake up a little bit later-ish, but I got home, like, not too late and stuff. So, yeah, I mean, I was happy. Life was good. So, I had just finished my shift, um, got into my car, prepared, you know, to drive home. So, you know, I got inside, seatbelt on, um, made sure my music was right, and then I just got into, like, my groove drive out of work and then I'm on the road just settling in and then I approach robot number one uh, like I stop like obviously the robot was red so I stop and like I remember just immediately um, after I stopped there was just like this huge like bang from the passenger side and like when I try to even like you know catch a, a, a look of what's happening like the window like um, it just came flying and it hit me like a little bit over here so my windows actually have smashed and grabbed so I believe that somebody from the outside had smashed it and because of the smash and grab it didn't like shatter into like a thousand pieces it actually just came out as it was because like the I think the smash and grab is like a sticky film kept it together so the mechanism came out like just as it was and it came and hit me over here and I remember like I freaked out I did not know what was happening now remember I've just like learned how to drive I'm not even that good at driving I remember I took off <laughs> like I just drove away and I was like on gear number one for the longest time I remember just hearing the car go like <laughs> because I think I'd been on gear number one and I was like past two kilometers but like I, and then I realized okay you have to change the gears it's like something worse is gonna happen so I changed the gears I proceed to go forward and I drove to the nearest garage which was like Nandy Drive so when I get to Nandy Drive like now I'm bleeding but it wasn't like a, a hectic thing I think the window just hit me a little bit but then it was just a little bit like of, of bleeding I didn't even realize that when I was like leaving the scene 
I just wanted to get away from there like as soon as I could because I didn't understand what was happening at the time because I was not familiar with this. Um, and then when I got to the garage, um, you know, I explained what had happened. Like, it is like there were cops there actually. So I got there and I explained to them what had happened. And then they were like, and did they take anything? And I hadn't seen that like they actually taken my bag because I'd actually forgotten that when I came out of work, I put my bag on the passenger seat. So they're like, oh, did they take anything? And I was like, hold up. They took my bag. And then, yeah, that's when I realized, oh, snap. Oh, snap. At the time when it actually had happened, I was so confused because I didn't know whether like were they trying to like smash the window so that their hand could go in, they open the door, they come inside, they hijack me. I didn't really know like what was the purpose of that whole thing. So that's when I realized, oh okay, uh, so I did get robbed actually. They took my bag and in my bag I remember I had my phone, my ID and everything. And I remember my phone, it was even like a Blackberry, a Blackberry 9300 curve. It was during those Blackberry times. So yeah, then the cops explained to me that what happens to you is a crime called smash and grab. So basically what happens is that like maybe when you stop the robots or maybe when you're like stuck in traffic, these guys come and they smash your window and they take whatever it is that they've seen in the car. So that was actually me learning like my first lesson <laughs> that you do not put your bags on the seat like at all. You don't put your bags, you don't put anything valuable actually like on, on seats, um, any seats in the car because it's actually attracting them to come and like do this thing. And I don't think it only happens to cars as well because it happens to shops as well now. Like if they see something valuable on the display, then they just smash, you know, and then they just take whatever it is that they've seen so yeah that was what i actually learned like from 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 that first incident that don't put any of your valuables like on the chairs and stuff and um what i also learned was that it was actually good that i had smash and grab like that film because it helped because it didn't the window like didn't completely disintegrate if i didn't have smash and grab the window could have like broken to like you know like pieces dangerous pieces and when they hit like something could have come and like stabbed me or something so it's a good thing to have smash and grab as much as it doesn't completely prevent you know them from being successful in doing what they're doing but at least it will help you with like the pieces of glass and whatnot so that there's, there isn't like too much of like a dangerous impact and all that so i still do recommend smash and grab also smash and grab looks good on the windows because it kind of like tints your windows a little bit and it helps like with um if it's hot and stuff it helps that so that the sun doesn't become too much you know like make the car too hot so i recommend smash and grab is a good thing to have but yeah like it's not gonna stop the crime from happening keeping your valuables out of sight will definitely help you more in that regard okay so now like incident okay so the incident happened now now like you know i'm a woke girl i don't put valuables around and everything and i'm thinking like this is not it's never gonna happen to me ever again i've learned my lesson and life is good i go on so now like i think a few years later like i think maybe around 2015 2016 i remember i was actually coming back from campus um i was actually using my father's car at that time and I went to classes and after classes I had to go um, to a place called South Beach <laughs> now South Beach honey what a pandemic <laughs> it's actually like I think it's the crime capital of, of like I don't know if it's the whole Durban I think Nanda is giving it like a competition but I've never experienced anything in Nanda uh, but I've experienced a lot of stuff in South Beach like the next three incidences all take place there so if you ever find yourself in that place uh, you need to be careful and like if you can try to not find yourself in the place at all <laughs> I think it's actually better so okay um it was after campus I had to go drop something off by a friend's flat and she lived in South Beach a lot of people in Durban live in South Beach because um you know, I think I can say the sections, like some that are, are like better than others, 
you know like the site that's more like uh, that has a lot of flats and all that is not as bad but like i'm not saying it's good <laughs> but i'm just saying it's not as bad as like the other areas so i actually had to go there um to go drop something off by a friend so it was gonna be a quick in and out you know i left campus i went to like campus i went to ml Salton, so it was not too far from ml Salton dut campus it was not too far from south beach i dropped off what i had to drop off by my friend and i remember the time like it was around like 6 35 so the spa around my hood where i stay i stay in melbourne they closed at seven so i needed some stuff from spa so i just decided that since um there's a spa in south beach i was just gonna quickly stop there and get the stuff because by the time i came to this side of town the spa was going to be closed okay cool so um i go to the spa and i had actually like since i like my i had a, a backpack and it had like my laptop and everything and since i don't put it on the seat anymore like everything was underneath the seats it was underneath the driver's seat like it was way it was out of sight so there was no way you could see it because my laptop was not that big and my backpack was actually small as well so it was just well underneath um the seat anyways i parked i go inside the spa it was a quick 10 minute in and out get what I get and then I come out so now I don't know if I'm the only person that like this happens to but sometimes when I'm like walking and I can see my car and I'm walking towards it it always looks like like when the sun is setting it always looks like there's no window like it, it's kind of like I don't know if it's like an illusion or something but it looks like the window is not there and then every time I get there though like when I come closer I realize that no the window is there I don't know if it's like PTSD or something or if it happens to everybody else but yeah that usually happens to me so then yeah, I was coming out of the shop and I was looking at my dad's car and I'm like no man there's no window there and then I'm like no but there is a window I mean this always happens to you you'll see it when you get closer so I walk I walk I walk I walk and then I get to the car and there is no window <laughs> they had actually smashed like the back window the the window right behind the driver and i was just like oh my god like i just took a peek under the chair and the bag was gone like i legit have no idea how the hell did they smell that there was something underneath the chair but like i think that's the thing with south beach paras i think those paras are like on the next level of para rhythm <laughs> so i don't know maybe they can probably smell valuables or something but anyways now okay laptop is gone my dad's car window is smashed and i was like freaking out because he had given me his car to go to campus like and i just made like a quick just a quick drop off and then this happened so now I had to come home and I had to tell him and you know like um, South Beach is also referred to as Point so Point has a very bad reputation I think especially amongst the older generation it's like the capital of prostitution, drug dealing, everything <laughs> it's like the biggest pandemic ever so now I have to explain to my dad who gave me mm, his car to go to campus that I went to Point and the end point they smashed his window and like and I'm like, no, I had to go see my friend. And then when I was about to have a point, <laughs> that was not an easy conversation. But anyways, <laughs> it happened. And then, yeah, like I really thought I was like woke. And like, I can't believe like this mission grab happened to me like for a second time. So I guess like now the lesson got revised and it was like, no, don't have your venables on the seats don't have them underneath the seats <laughs> i don't actually know where you must have them inside the car the only place i can recommend is just put your stuff in the boots i don't know if they can actually like um open the boots or whatever but it has never happened to me but i think it's just the safest way to do things especially if you're going to be in an area that it is a bigger of that is as big of a pandemic as south beach just put your stuff in the booth guys it's just not worth it like it sucks having to replace a window and then Dalana, you've lost whatever valuables it is that you've lost so yeah that was actually the second time that i experienced something in that gomorrah of a place no it was the first time i've experienced something in that gomorrah of a place 
okay so now i think it's like also like now these incidences were not all happening like now and now and now like i said the first one happened around 2012 the second one was around like 2015 2016 then the third one it happened pretty soon after the the second one like i said it was also in Gomorrah, aka south beach <laughs> i was um at my friend's flat we were like all just having a young chillers I think, I don't know if it was a Friday or something, but we're all there, it was after work, we're chilling, we're eating, whatever, we're just vibing and stuff, we're having the baths and everything, you know, post-work, distress, and then it was time to go home. Now, in South Beach, like, they don't have a lot of parking inside, like, the complexes and the flats and whatever, the parkings, like, are very limited, and it's usually just one parking for the person who lives like in the flat and there isn't any like visitors parking and stuff but along the roads like there is parking spaces i think in most of the roads like both on the left and the right there would be parking spaces so you just park in front of wherever you're going and then yeah you do your thing so i had done that and then we chilled now it's time to go home i get into my car and then i'm like you know trying to switch it on and there's like no reaction like what okay this is weird <laughs> and i'm like maybe it's because like the level of bev is like maybe like <laughs> but I, like i felt like i was fine and like no man it's not that so i do it again and then like there's no reaction nothing's coming on so i'm like how what's going on here and my friends were actually still across the road like they were waiting for me to drive off so yeah i come out of the car and as I'm coming out to like actually go and talk to them to tell them that like I go, oh, how you do me? <laughs> um, I actually noticed that like my bonnet is open, like you can tell when it's not like closed properly. So I'm like, oh god, what happened here now? I open the bonnet. When I open the bonnet, there's like a big fat square, wait, like empty square cube where my where my where my battery is supposed to be. So. Turns out now these people have checked my battery. And I had literally just bought the battery probably like a month or two back and it had cost me like a grand. I was like, oh my god, not this again. It's like the middle of the month. And now they just took my battery and you literally can't do anything without a battery. So, okay, that's like now number three. And then we're like, okay, what are we gonna do? We are now we also get a new battery and but luckily, well, I don't know if I can say luckily, but then, like, South Beach doesn't sleep, so places open till late there. So we start walking around looking for like a shop where we can actually buy a battery. And like, lo and behold, it's like a shop that is not even like two kilometers away from where this thing happened. And there's a guy who's offering us a second-hand battery because we explained what happened. And he's like, oh no, I can offer you guys a second-hand battery for half price. So he just sold us a battery. The battery was like 450 or something. And I was actually so mad because that battery that I bought actually looked like the battery that I had bought like, <laughs> you know, prior. So I think they actually just took my battery and then they actually just sold it back to me. <laughs> and like, ugh. but it is what it is. It is what it is, we all know where we live and we just have to deal with things like that sometimes so we paid it and then yeah like my car was good and then i went home so that was incident number three i think i can say like my takeaway from that is don't park in places that are like that don't have a lot of foot traffic because I really think that like maybe they, they won't have an opportunity to do that if you if you park in a place like where people are constantly moving around they'll be able to see that because it's not something that they can do in secret so just try and like don't park in shady places and park where there's a lot of foot traffic and especially like if you're gonna be in the in places like the CBD because my like most of my friends have had it happen to them in the CBD not just specifically South Beach now. So, and I'm sure it's not just going to be like the CBD from Durban. So, just make sure that like when you're parking, park in like a place where there's a lot of traffic and make sure that um, like people are not going to go away in that in a place. Like maybe if you're parking like let's say maybe in front of like a, 
an office block or something like all those people are going to leave around four and whatever so there's not going to be anyone there so just park in a place that's going to have like constant constant people there and um what i do most of the time though especially because um parking in town is not like very easy to find anyway it's a pandemic so i just park like somewhere like the workshop the workshop is like a, i think i can say it's like a mall but it's somewhere central to our cbd here in durban so i'll just park in the workshops parking even if like it needs a pay parking but i don't mind like i'll just park my car there and then if i have to do something in the cbd then i'll just walk on foot and most times i'll leave my cell phone behind like in the boots and all that because i <laughs> i don't have money to like replace all my stuff all the time so i just try to rather be safe i'm sorry and i'll just put my cart like in my pocket and i'll just walk as i am so that like nobody mugs me <laughs> along the way and like if my car is left in a safe parking where there's like securities and all that on the long then i'm not gonna come back to find any nasty surprises because apart from batteries they still wheel caps they still emblems they just they still literally everything they, they can still they actually stole one of my friends ariel you know like the radio ariel thing so they will just literally go to town on your car so just try and keep it's like in a safe place like just try and find the safest parking you can find even if you have to pay like paying like 20 rand or even 50 rand it's not a bad price to pay if you can actually guarantee the safety of your car and of your stuff like just peace of mind so that is what i would recommend um yeah that's gonna save you a lot <sighs> okay now so it is on to the fourth and final incident and this one was actually quite recent i think it happened like um like yeah it happened about like a week ago today is sunday and it happened like last week sunday so my friend was actually having a party for her daughter her daughter was 10 and 10 um okay cool party goes on everything whatever and it was nice it was chill vibes and then the party was done so my friend like had actually promised some of the parents that she was gonna bring the kids home and they didn't have to come and fetch them and she had actually like came with some of her friends as well with her car so now since she had to transport the kids to their homes some of her friends were stranded that she had arrived with so she was like children please help me and just take um my friends home for me so i was like okay cool you know let me be helpful you know the party was actually in somewhere in a place called cowie's hill cowie's hill is literally about like 15 minutes like yeah 15 minutes actually from where i stay but you know like i was being nice you can't like not you can't actually not help out you know when a situation like that arises yeah so okay cool i say yes and then like lo and behold of course one of the girls has to live in south beach <laughs> so okay we're driving we're driving to south beach and then um on our way like we had inside south beach on our way though now my car which um is now like <laughs> it's old <laughs> had it for a while now and i'm actually looking into changing it soon but yeah because now it's getting into ungovernable situations but anyways it has like um it breaks down some somewhere in the middle of south beach so like okay and it won't start again so I'm like, oh snap, now we're like stuck. It's me and this girl that I was going to drop off at her place. Now we're stuck. And then um, I think people notice, some guys come over and they offer to help us. They ask us the issue, we explain it to them. Then they're like, no, we have to kick starts and stuff. And you know, I know how to kick starts. I've had a car for a while. And so I know all those things, you know, kick starts, gear number two, release clutch petrol. I know the, the whole vibe. So they were like, okay, we'll push you because it wasn't like on a downhill or anything. They were like, okay, cool, we'll give you guys a push and you kick stars and you know, you're good. Okay, okay, the guys help us and like now the car has started and um, you know, we are about to go. So I come out of the car to be like, thank you so much guys for your help and everything. And the girl that I was actually with, she was already out. She was, she had never, she, she wasn't inside the car when I was kickstarting it, but she was outside. 
So when I come outside now to like say thank you to these guys before she comes inside and we drive off, she, she's like having a screaming watch with the other guy. She's like, why are you taking my phone? So I'm like trying to find out what's happening. I'm like, what? Wait, what happened? Who took your phone? When? How? Because I don't understand because these guys like they just helped us. And then she's like, no man, this guy just grabbed my phone and he won't give it back. So I'm like trying to see what's going on this side and I had my phone in my hand and this other guy snatched mine. So now I'm like, how? When's I land Milana Manje? These people just helped us, and then, like in the very same breath, they have just robbed us. <laughs> I was so confused to see like what is happening, but then I also know where I am, so I kind of expected that kind of stuff, you know. <laughs> that place is just it's a shady place, so you must always just be expectant of anything. So okay, guys, yeah. Those were the four incidences that I can say um, where I've actually experienced crime and I've lost stuff. And yeah, man, you know, I'm just happy that like, well, like I'm just happy that it hasn't been violent, you know, like I haven't had a gun pointed to me or, you know, I haven't like been, like I haven't been harmed physically. You know, it's just been like material things because we all know how dangerous it is actually in this country of ours. You can literally like die. <laughs> like you just, yeah, it's very bad. Like uh, the crime is terrible. And I'm just grateful that these things have been mild. But anyways, um, I hope that these tips that I've dished out are going to help you guys to be able to avoid them, you know, to be able to do whatever it is. Um, that's within your power to actually avoid them and yeah I am definitely um, fixing my I'm definitely actually I'm not even fixing it anymore I think it's time I've had my cover a really long time and it has served me very very well but now if it is going to break down in like awkward places and put my life in danger I can't have it anymore um, so I'm, I'm definitely like gonna get a new car pretty soon but yeah, I mean, I'm grateful for life and you guys should be wary of all these things that I've mentioned and then I don't want you guys finding yourselves in the same situation. Stay woke. Um, yeah, thank you for chilling with me and then I'll see you guys on the next video. I hope you enjoyed it.